the Lord's Supper is the partaking of the bread and the fruit of the vine, which represent the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a privilege to actually sup with Christ. Let us examine ourselves. Repentance and confession. To repent is to a, a true, express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing or sin. A change of heart resulting in a closeness to our Almighty God. I urge each of you to repent of your sin daily. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 29. For I have received of the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he breaks it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of our Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat and drink unworthily eat and drink damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Jesus, I remember when your body was broken for me, and for that I am so grateful, so grateful for what you have done for me. And when I take this, your body today, I'm taking you as the living bread. I can do without many things, Lord. I can do without a lot of things, but I cannot do without you. Take the bread. Let us eat together. I remember your blood, the blood of the new covenant. What a beautiful covenant that we are made right with you by faith. You always forgive us for every sin when we confess our sin and believe in our hearts. A covenant that no one can break, a covenant that is sealed with your own precious blood, as I eat and drink of you, I shall be fully and completely satisfied. Let us drink together. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Lord, for this supper. Merry Christmas to you and your family. I want to praise God and thank him for a great 2021 ministry and I pray that God will prepare us in a closer relationship with him in the year 2022. Merry Christmas. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Open your heart, open your mind and let's pray to our Father. Heavenly Father, we come before you today thanking you for watching over us throughout the year. 
We thank you for another opportunity to serve you. It is a privilege indeed. We believe in your son, the Lord Jesus the Christ. We believe in your amazing love for us. In the name of Jesus, we recognize that the only thing we have going for us is you. Without you, we can't do nothing. We believe that Jesus' body was broken for us. His blood was shed for us. We praise and thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ. By his stripes, we are healed. Through his sacrifice, we have complete redemption. Yes, we are redeemed, we are forgiven, and we are free. In Jesus' name we pray, let the saints of God say amen. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles with me to Galatians at chapter number 4. Verses 4 through verse number 7. I'll be reading from the King James Version. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent, sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and because ye are sons hallelujah god sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying Abba, Father. Verse 7 reads, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Thank you. I want to preach a moment about the admiration of and the intimidation of Christmas. It is an admiration because God has set his uniquely born son. He loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son to save us. And it's an intimidation because everything that is worldly is trying to take Christ out of Christmas. Seasons, greetings, anything not to say, Merry Christmas. It's not about reindeer. It's not about lights. It's not about food. It's not about bags and gifts. It's not about sleigh bells ringing and chestnuts roasting. It's about God has done a new thing. Revelation chapter 21 verse 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. And the theology of it is so rich and powerful that unless you are not looking for it, you can easily miss it. You can't find it under a tree. You can't find it in the mall. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. In that song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, God through Jesus Christ has shown us who he is written by Charles Wesley in 1739. 
He is the offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. Held incarnate deity. Please, as man with man to dwell, Jesus, our Emmanuel. That's who Jesus is. But, but, but today I want to share with us what he came to do. I want you to see with me, brothers and sisters, number one, the power behind what Jesus came to do. And it's right here in verse number four. But when the fullness of time was come, his great love for us, church, is not seen in what he gives us, but in who he gave us. Let me run that by you one more time. His great love is not seen in what he gives us, but in who he gave us. Because those of us who are anemic and young and childish in our faith can only praise God for what he gives. We are only happy when we have something new. Come on, talk back to me if you can. We can only praise God when we get a raise and if we get a new car, if we have some money in our pocket, we have new furniture, we have a new home. That's what God gives. But that's the minimal thing that we ought to be praising God about. Because if God takes all of these things away from us, we still ought to be able to come to church on Sunday morning and praise him not for what he gives, but who he gave. Romans at chapter number 5, verse 8 says, But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. Come on, you can help me preach it. You know the scripture? Christ died for us. That's more than a car. That's worth shouting over more than a job. I wish I had two or three believers here. Because if the Lord takes all the stuff again away from us, I still have Jesus. And Jesus, that's all I need. I've got a reason to show up in church, to shout and praise God. I can thank God anywhere. I can praise God in my house, on my job, whatever opportunity God gives me to praise him, not for what he gives, but for who he gave. But in the fullness of time, the time was perfect. God's timing is always perfect. It was the right time religiously religiously there was no more idolatry after the Assyrian host had taken over the northern and the southern kingdoms of Israel and Judah the diaspora was all over the known world and every idol had been toppled no more idolatry it was the right time religiously. And then it was the right time culturally because Alexander the Great has conquered the known world and Greek is the common language and so that everybody can hear the gospel in the common coiny Greek of their day. It was the right time culturally because everybody was able to hear the gospel. And then politically, it was the right time because of the real Romano, the Lex Romano, 
in the Pax Romano, where Rome makes enough freedom with enough control to maintain itself as a superpower. So that because of the laws and the streets and the aqueducts and Rome's freedom to the people of God, that now the gospel can get out all over the place because God waited for the right time. And, and brothers and sisters, if you belong to the Lord, you know something about God's timing. I'm not talking about Kronos time because Kronos has to do with chronology or the head of a clock going clockwise, you know, clockwise motion. That's chronological time, like January, February, March, April, and May. That's chronological time, or 12 o'clock, 1, 2, 3, 4 p.m. That's chronos time. But God does things in kairos time. God blesses us in time that we don't expect the blessing to show up. We don't expect the blessing to come. When least expected, God just blesses us with blessing we don't even understand. Because God opens the door for us in time. He may not come. My grandmother said to me one time, He may not come when you want Him. But he is always on time. I need some witnesses here who can help me testify that when you don't wait on God, when you don't wait on God, God, you always pay for it at the end. Worse than not waiting on God is wishing you had waited later on. Because God's time is not our time. God's ways is not our ways. You can help me preach it. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8. You have some prayers answered in a way that you are not expecting. God does not give you the option to choose the answer. He just say ask and it shall be given. And he knows what you need chironically rather than chronologically. But brothers and sisters, as I want to talk to you not only does god have to get your blessing ready for you he gotta get you ready for your blessing because if you get too much too soon you start thinking that you made it on your own and that's what's wrong with us and that's what's wrong with these children now yours and mine they have too much they don't have to struggle for anything they don't have to suffer for anything. That's why they don't appreciate anything. You who are around my age, you can't remember that it looked like Christmas will take forever to come. And myself, me and my brother Bobby would be in bed at five o'clock in the afternoon, just waiting on Christmas to come. And my, my mother and my father used to say, you better get in bed because Santa is right down the corner, right down the street by Miss Vine house. And I, I mean, we got under the cover, covered up, just waiting for Christmas to come. But these children now, they got so much. They got too much. It's, it's, it's towards our us. It's, it's, it's chuck and cheese. It's everything they want right now. If they don't get it right now, it, it almost messes with their mind because we are accustomed to making sure that they are not mad with us. Hmm. You didn't expect that sudden turn hmm, in the message. Did you? My mama didn't care about me being mad with her. Talk back to me if you can. Because she would say in a minute, you better fix your face. Anybody here was raised like I was raised? 
I brought you in this world, she used to say. And I think she was crazy enough to take us out. But when you have too much, you start thinking, you start to think that you deserve it. And you don't deserve God's mercy. You don't deserve God's goodness. You don't deserve God's grace. He just lavishes it on us because God just commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. We see number one, the power of what Christ came to do. But I want you to see, secondly, the purpose of Christ's redemption. Jesus has come to purpose us. It's right here in verse number five. To redeem them that were under the law. That word redeem means to purchase so that the one who has been purchased will never be put up for slavery ever again. And brothers and sisters, I am a Christian and I have been a Christian since the age of five. And I don't always look like a Christian. I don't always like like a Christian. I don't always talk like a Christian, but I am a child of God. I can be manipulated by the devil. I can be stimulated by the devil. I can be motivated by the devil. I can be activated by the devil. But one thing that the devil will never be able to do to me again is solely and completely possess me because my soul is under new management. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man, I wish I had a Bible reader here, be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are becoming new. He redeemed me from the hand of the enemy. He brought me back from the master who owned me. And listen, brothers and sisters, if Christ is not your master, Satan is. So he purchased my salvation. So we see in the text, number one, the power of what Christ came to do. And secondly, we see the purpose of Christ's redemption. So finally, Jesus came, number three, to parent us. We call it the parenting behind why he came. Because verse six and verse number seven talks about adoption. Now, adoption is not a Jewish custom. It's not customary for the Jews to adopt a person. Adoption is a Roman custom. The Romans adopted in a ceremony called the Toga Virilis. The Toga Virilis is a ceremony where the father takes off the Toga Protector and places it on the adopted one. The Togo Virilis, meaning it takes him from being an heir de facto to an heir de jour. De facto means I have the privileges, but I can't get to it yet. De facto, because legally is not officially sanctioned. In contrast, de jour means not only do I have the privilege de facto, but I got them in my hand. It is officially sanctioned by the state. In other words, I am in the kingdom already. 
but not yet. And since I am not yet in the kingdom, there is an inheritance that is waiting on me by God. Is giving me a little bit, but God is giving me a little bit at a time. I still don't think I got that over to you. Let, let me say it like this. When you come to Christ, he takes off his robe of your sin and put on the garment of his righteousness so that now you are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. So that what Christ owns, I own the facto and the jour. Blessed Assurance is a well-known Christian hymn written in 1873. He wrote the song because he said, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, oh, what a foretaste. I don't have it all yet. It's a foretaste of glory divine. Some of you was raised like I was raised. You know, during Thanksgiving time and Christmas. Dinner was a big deal. I mean, my mother would prepare for days for Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner. You got to be raised in the country as an islander. You see the people in Maryland and, and, and Virginia and D.C., you don't know anything about this. I don't think you do because you have to be from the country. But my mama would get uh, 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 what they called a meat grinder and put it on the edge of the table and she would screw it down with those little bolts on the side. You got to be over 50 to know what I'm talking about. And, and, and turn that meat grinder and that meat would come out on the other side and every time, in, in, uh, 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 and every once in a while, she put her hands under there and let me taste it. That was the that's that was that wasn't the dressing yet. It was a foretaste. And you remember those old-fashioned ice cream makers? You would put dry ash on the top and 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 and, and of it and turn the crank and, and that custard with that custard and the little thing in the middle. And every once in a while, she'll put a spoon in there and give us a taste. It wasn't an ice cream yet. It was just a foretaste. Somebody ought to help me preach here. Every once in a while, God just give me a taste. I'm not in heaven yet, but every now and then, it gives me a foretaste. That's it. what shouting on Sunday is all about. That's what praising God on Sunday morning is all about. I haven't seen my mother yet. I haven't seen my father yet. I haven't seen my Savior yet. But I got a foretaste. I am an heir of salvation. I have been purchased by God. I am born of his spirit I am washed in his blood and this is my story this is my song praising my savior perfect submission perfect delight you're going to help me preach this won't you vision of rapture now burst on my sight angels descending they bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love, perfect submission, perfect delight. All is at rest. I am happy and blessed. Wow. We need to start practicing before we get to heaven. Because God we are praising the Savior all the day long. Is there anybody here praising my Savior all the day long? 
is there anybody here know something about a foretaste of glory divine is there anybody here no god has been good to you no he had not been for the lord who is on your side you wouldn't be where you are right now if the lord opened doors for you that's just a foretaste if the lord made a way for you that's just a foretaste if the lord save your soul that's just a foretaste why don't you tell somebody and tell them you think i'm shouting right now that's just a foretaste you think i'm praising god right now that's just a foretaste that's just a, why don't you start practicing before we get to heaven because god has been good to me i can't help myself i just can't keep it to myself i can't keep it to myself what the lord has done for me he brought me from a mighty long way i was sick and he healed me i was done he picked me up he turned me around he placed my feet on solid ground thank you jesus thank you thank you jesus hallelujah praising my savior all the day long i'm just an heir de facto i am an heir de jour i belong to god and jesus christ I don't have to wait till the battle is over. I can go ahead and shout right now. The victory has already been won. The battle has already been fought. Jesus gave his life on the cross so that when I get to heaven, I'm going to get finally what I have been tasting all along. This joy, this peace is nothing to be compared to the greater weight of glory. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of those that God has prepared for them that love him. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. Not meaning if I go. Not meaning I may or may not go. It means that since I'm already going, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, you shall be also. The admiration of and the intimidation of Christmas. May God bless you. May heaven smiles upon you. That is my prayer. Now family, and the best thing you can do in this season is to join with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Come to him and get a foretaste of glory divine what is to come in heaven just come and accept him as your lord and savior is there one this morning is there one amen for the benediction we want to thank god for watching over us with 2021 ministry praise God for launching us powerfully into the 2022 ministry we want to praise God for that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all Merry Christmas mm -hmm.